So now that we've looked at some of the functional group conversions and our ways of modifying the carbon skeleton, uh, we want to put it all together and examine some common patterns in synthesis and then work some examples uh, that are relevant. Uh, and so in this case, I want to look, if you start with an alkane, and I mentioned this at the beginning, the only thing you know how to do is add a leaving group, turn it into an alkyl halide, and bromine will be much more common than chlorine. Uh, and so in this case, Br2 and light will get us an alkyl halide, and recall that bromine is a great leaving group, and being a great leaving group, we now have the option of doing SN1 or SN2, and generally we'll choose SN2, SN1 and E1 compete, and it's hard to get a good yield of either the SN1 or the E1 product, so we'll generally do SN2, there are a couple exceptions where you might do SN1, but most of the time you'll be SN, doing SN2 if you're doing it, and you'll just simply replace that with a nucleophile. So no set functional group here. There's a variety of them depending on what nucleophile you used for SN2. Recall that SN2 uses a strong nucleophile. Uh, but even more common than that is probably doing some elimination here. So, and using the bulky base in this case with a secondary halide. The secondary halide, a non-bulky base might do both SN2 and E2. Uh, probably more likely to do E2 than SN2, so that'd be the major and SN2 the minor. But if you want to make sure that you're only doing E2, that's when you'd use the bulky base, because SN2 largely is not going to happen. Uh, and so in this case, we're going to form an alkene. So now we've gone from alkane to alkyl halide, and now alkyl halide to alkene. And since you've already had an entire chapter of alkenes, you know a lot of the alkene reactions, this is useful. And so all those different alkene reactions, notice like if you add H2SO4 and water, or just simply dilute H2SO4, they might write as H3O+. Plus. That turns an alkene into an alcohol. It adds an H and OH, Markovnikov fashion. Uh, you do have to worry about rearrangements, but not in this example. Uh, so that would be one case of something you might do. Uh, you know, you might do BH3, THF, followed by H2O2, NaOH, and that's hydroboration oxidation. And in this case, that would add H and OH anti-Markov, and I've put the OH on the less substitute side. These are just such a case to pay tip, you know, very uh, good attention to. When you can do two different reactions that are very similar, but just different in a regioselectivity or different in stereoselectivity, those are things to pay attention to. They're great places for your instructor to, to test you on. Uh, so in this case, though, we've gone from alkane to alkyl halide, alkyl halide to alkene, and then you've got a whole bunch of alkene reactions that are possible. One thing to note, you also learned how to brominate allylically. So if you form an alkene, you could potentially brominate on that allylic carbon by using NBS and bromosuccinamide. Uh, and in this case, now that you've got another good leaving group in the bromine there, so being allylic, it's also activated for SN2, but potentially if you had more carbons, you might be doing E2. And so again, you might be using a strong nucleophile like I did in this case. Uh, or if you had a longer carbon chain, you might be adding a strong base and forming a second alkene as well. But this is a common pattern in synthesis. Alkane to alkyl halide, alkyl halide to alkene, and then you've got a variety of options for all the different alkene reactions you've learned. Now one thing to keep in mind, I've started from the beginning here, oftentimes you're not going to get this entire kind of process for a synthesis, but maybe some combination of something in between. So most synthesis problems you're likely to see at this point are probably going to be in the range of like two to four steps. Let's take a look at some examples. Okay, when you're doing a synthesis problem, your professor's probably going to really harp on you to work it backwards. So, and one, first of all, it is very helpful to work them backwards, but you don't always have to work it backwards completely anyways. Uh, in this first step, I'll show you, uh, we know what's going to happen in this first step. We have an alkane here, and the only thing you know how to do with an alkane is add a good leaving group. And so in this case, we're going to do bromination. That way it's very selective. So, and in this case, it'll put a bromine in place of a hydrogen, a substitution reaction, on the more substitute carbon, and we'll get here. So, but the question is, how do we make this product? And this is where we're going to start working this backwards. And if we look here, to make an alcohol, I can make an alcohol from an alkyl halide. So, and I could potentially do this with an SN2 reaction, being that this is a primary halide. I also know how to pull this off with an alkene. So in this case, this would be anti-Markovnikov, and so I'd have to worry about doing this, you know, with hydroboration oxidation. So a couple different ways we could do this, and pretty much from what you've learned, that's probably what you have for options up till this point. And so the question is, is it easier to turn our 2-bromopropane either into 1-bromopropane or into an alkyne, or alkene? And in this case, we can definitely turn it into the alkene. So, and we can do it in one step here. That's just simply E2 elimination. And we've got a secondary halide to make sure we do E2 elimination. We should use a bulky base. 
And so in this case, I'm going to use potassium terbutoxide. That forms our alkene, and then we can do the hydroboration oxidation here, BH3THF with peroxide under basic conditions, and get anti-Markovnikov addition to get our alcohol. So very, you know, followed pretty much to a T the pattern we set forth in that last common uh, synthesis pattern.